Good morning, all. So today I have offering. And I it's in um, the Apostles Books of the Storehouse on page 15 and through 17, and it's number 19. She um in the number 19 it says this item of study in the in the text is expounds upon Deuteronomy 28 8. And she provided many um different versions of that verse, but one that stood out to me was the Lord shall command blessings upon you in your storehouse and in all that you undertake, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And that is amplified version, but with the one with the C, A M P C. And later she has like this bullet point. Um, and it says the word command blessings means God will grant you a blessing. To command some, something means to give an authoritative order. The Lord is saying, because you have established the storehouse, he will give you an authoritative order to bless you while you are in your storehouse. So when you are in the place where you are storing in my tithes in obedience to my word, I will command a blessing upon you. In this verse, he is not speaking of blessings, the things, but rather blessings, the person. To command the blessing is to is also to oppose any curse against you. This is this is a benefit of your deposit being in the storehouse. And at the towards the end of it, it says many times we forget that the Lord is the one who gives us the land and he blesses us on it. When we are obedient, we receive blessings. Blessings of healing, blessings of not being in debt, blessings of learning, knowledge, wisdom, his food. When we are obedient, everything else follows. Everything else. And sometimes we are so stressed out or we're so worried about, I don't have the finances right now to do it. I can't give. But when we are obedient, everything else follows. Nothing else matters. Because he has greater things plans for us. We may get stuck on, oh, I want this one thing. And God doesn't give it to me. But you know what? What if in, he has something better planned? What if that thing is going, to, uh, is going to more affect you in a negative way? And what he has for you is going to bless you many times. Have you not noticed? In the New One Leaders, we have this whole group chat. But if you looked on, on Apostles Facebook, through this, how, this whole week, and I think even the starting of this month, we, I have noticed healing. I've noticed God is answering the prayers. She went through a whole struggle since she got back from Africa and even before then. I've noticed healing happening. I've noticed a lot of things. What is God doing to you through your obedience? Obedience brings blessings of healing. He is our father. He will heal us when we are obedient to him, when we surrender us, surrender ourselves to him. So I'm going to pray for this. Father God, I thank you, Jesus, for, for this offering and for this place. Father God, I thank you for your sacrifice upon that cross. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you that you are our good father and you take care of us no matter how much we try to doubt. Your mercy is new every single day. You don't expect us to be perfect. You just expect us to be willing vessels for you, to praise you and to love you just like you love us. You created us out of love, not for out of, out of hatred or anything. You created us out of love. You're raising us up out of love. And all you want us to do is be open up to, your, to you, Father God. I ask that we're able to continue to be blessed, continue to be obedient to you, Father God, not because you owe us anything, but because of who, because you are our God and we love you so much. I ask that you just continue to bless everybody and anybody who needs healing, that you are here, you, that they are healed in your name, Father God. I ask that we are, our minds are clear, our minds are open to receive what you, what we, what you have for us to receive today, Father God. I ask that our our minds are open, our hearts are open to hear that we are have willing hear ears to hear your word, Father God. In Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you. You could hear me? Amen. Amen. I give glory to God and joy that the privilege he gave me one more time to bring his word. Um, and it's a privilege and it's an honor, like Kelsey said, to be obedient to what God sends us to do. And let's get ready. Are you ready? <laughs> No, you're not ready. I'm sorry. We're going in a journey today. I don't know about you, but we're going into a journey. So it's kind of sweaty here, but praise the Lord. We give glory to God. Um, and I want you to look at Psalms 121, 121. And we're going to we're gonna go in a journey. So I'm gonna read um in the NIV version and says in the name of the Father and the Holy Ghost, amen. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your feet slip. He who watched over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watched over Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord watched over you. The Lord is the shield at the right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor by night, um, the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over you, coming and going, both now and forevermore. It's like I always like to bring a little bit of definitions and of what I'm going to preach. And Psalms. The definition in Psalms is songs of praise. It also not only gives us that chance to praise God, as the Israel used to do. They used to take these Psalms and they used to praise God. But it also brings to worship, for confession, and also for forgiveness to God. So now we know what Psalms means. It's interesting that Psalms, David wrote 73 of them. The other ones are other authors. And in different ways, Dave manifest his desire, his way of praising, his way of giving um, thanks to God in these Psalms. There's something very interesting too in the Psalms. From Psalms 120 to 134, they are known as songs of absence. I hope I said the word correctly, which um, in Hebrew, it's uh, mentioned molot. And it means going up or climbing. So like I said, we're going on an adventure today. So you have to be ready because <laughs> if you're not ready, so you're not ready for the adventure. But this venture is to go to see the Lord. My title of the um of my preach is where to look at. Where where are we gonna look at? Amen. <laughs> Where are we going to look at it? Are we going to look at the natural or are we going to look in the spiritual way? So we're going to take, I'm going to divide um, the Psalms 
in four um, ways. I'm going to read um, two verses at the same time, and I'm going to let you um, know. The first one is when it says, I lift my eyes to the mountain. We're doing an action, right? Or we're closing our eyes. When we do this action, do we got our eyes open or closed? It's open, right? Because what? We're looking where? To the mountain. And in mountains, you, I got two definitions. In the natural and in the spiritual way. In the natural, it's an elevation of land where it's rocky and it's high. But in the spiritual, you could find it is rescue, comfort, protection, but also you could find a challenge, obstacles, opposition in a mountain. Like I said, we go to a brunch and a journey, an adventure. We're gonna see why we have to look, where we have to look at, or why we have to look at that mountain. We're gonna look at that mountain in the spiritual way, not in the natural, because in the natural you see it's beautiful, wow, and everything. But in the spat in the spiritual way, in the spiritual way, is where you're gonna see if it's truly looking what you have to be looking at. And like in the first verse, it says he looked up in the mountains. And there's a question here. And he, he says that the one that's singing the song, it says, where does my help come from? But if we're looking at the mountains, we know there's something, what, behind the mountain. Remember, behind that mountain, we have to be alert. Because we could find that maybe in that mountains, there are the extractions that ain't going to make you see or look what you have to be looking for. But in the second verse, it says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It answered, it answered our first question. From where comes our help? From the maker. Are we looking at the creation or are we looking at the creator? Because when we look at that mountain, it comes with difficulties. And in your situation, you say, whoa, wait, wait, uh uh, uh that mountain is high. <laughs> I can't climb that. Because I'll be one of them that will be saying that, ah, uh, that mountain is too high. I can't climb that. But are we looking at the natural? Are we looking in the spiritual? Trusting God. Huh? Are we looking where we have to look? So we see that we, we can't be looking at the creation. We have to be cre um, looking at the creator the God, our Lord, because he's our helper. It says it there. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So we already going walking. We're doing that adventure, that journey. We're walking towards a mountain where we don't know what's going to happen, where we don't know what's going to, what we're going to see. If we're going to see, that's gonna be like a refuge for us, or it's or it's gonna be an obstacle, obstacle, or a position for us. So we just gonna come on, let's go. We go into that journey because I want to go to that journey because there's promises in this songs that if we go through that mountain, we got something waiting for us. That mountain 
And what is waiting for us is, I'm not going to say it yet because we have to continue. We have to continue with the journey. Verse three, it says, he will not let your feet slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watched over Israel will never slumber or sleep. Slumber means sleep or kind of like does it does you know like uh, when you oh you're falling oh my god yeah. but that's when he says your feet are not gonna slip is because who who we trusting on the natural on the creation or on the creator we're we're trusting on the creator and when he says he's not going to make your feet sl slip, it's because what we have to do, we have to trust them. No matter how we see the mountains, remember, we see in the mountain, it's going to be a problem ahead. We're going to see that, oh, there's troubles, oh, there's difficulties, there's in health there's problems, there's situations, and we see that mountain that it's going to be something impossible for us to pass. But it says it there. We got the helper. Who's the helper? Our Lord. So we have to trust him. Yeah. Hey, it's not easy because like I say, whoever says being a Christian is easy, Um, like my apostolate says, Tell me where what, like that we could roll with that person and make that perfect because uh-uh, serving God is not easy. And the enemy ain't gonna make it easy. He's gonna make he's gonna be there because he knows that you in the hands of the Lord, you are powerful. And he's gonna put things in your way. Yeah. But right here it says. He will not let you slip. And when he says he's not going to let you slip, <laughs> he's not going to do it. Because where he's going to tell you to stay what? Firm. He's going to hold you still. No matter what, you say, God, here I'm coming. I'm going to this journey and I'm walking to that mountain. I'm thinking even that I can't climb it, but I'm going over there because there's a purpose. There's a promise. There's something going to happen behind that mountain that I don't know, but I'm trusting God that he's going to do what he has to do. And when he takes you and he stands you, holds you, that he holds you because God is still with us. Yeah, sometimes... <laughs> We say, oh, Lord, where are you? But, hey, he's right there. He's right beside you. He just wants you to look, to look at what God wants you to look. Don't look at the natural. Look at the spiritual. Look at him. Look at him. No matter what you see. But like I say, he takes you and he holds you there. He holds you because he wants to make sure that you don't slip. Because if he would have been another guy, he would have not. Go ahead. Let me not hold you. Slip to see where you're going. Where you going to go? You're going to go down. Because, hey, God is holding you. He's going to hold you. And when he holds you, we stand with courage. When he holds you, we stand with grace. When he holds you, we stand in his word so firm and trusting him. But when we stand in the will of God, we are complete. Because like I say, he's there. He's making sure that you won't fall. No matter what. 
Indeed, if he watch over the Israel, how come he can't watch over us? Yes, he is. Yes, he always is watching us a hundred percent. Is that sometimes we're looking where we're not supposed to be looking instead of looking to God, seeking his word, going into his word. We're looking, uh, let me see what the world could offer me. Ah, oh, wait, the world offers me this and that, pleasures in a moment. But in the blink of eye, what happened? You're in the same place. You're doing, nothing happened. But when you're looking at God, trusting God, there's a promise. <laughs> and there's a promise there that, it will be fulfilled. And the promise is eternal life. <laughs> I want that. I want that. I don't know about Jews, but I want that. That am I perfect? Well, I'm not perfect. So don't look. Uh, Pastor Jackie's, uh-uh. Because I'm not perfect. I could slip. But I trust God. And I'm with being obedient to his word. And we doing what he wants us to do. So if he take care of the Israel, he take care of us too. He watch over us. He's always with us a hundred percent. The only thing we have to do is trust him and look at what we're supposed to look is our God, the King of Kings, the Almighty. Omega. And he, you will see him daily. When we trust him and we give everything to him and we say, God, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm coming here, humble my heart, and I'm giving it all to you. I'm willing for you to do what you have to do. I am your vessel. Use me the way you want me to be used. And you humble yourself. And when you humble yourself to God, you give it all to him. You will see that what we thought that that mountain was going to be difficult, we see the glory of God. And it is wonderful to trust the Lord. The five and six, it says, the Lord watch over you. The Lord is your shield in your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day or the moon by night. It says it there. The Lord will watch over you. And the Point one in this one right there is the shade of your right hand. The Lord is the shade. It's the shadow. He covers you. He covers you with his presence. When you're in those difficult times, you go to God and God is going to cover you with his right hand. He's going to hold you and he's going to say, don't worry. Don't worry, I got you. Don't worry, I'm here. I'm covering you. I'm covering you to protect you from what the enemy tries to bring to you. I protect you. I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to put that shadow, put that shadow of his presence to cover you and give you honor. Remember, that shadow is also strength. He's going to give you strength. That also is going to give you authority. That also is going to give you protection. And it also going to give you power. That's why God is going to cover you no matter what. And that's why we give glory to God. We give glory to him because he's the only one 
that could give us glory to God. He's the only one that's going to protect us. He's the only one. But we will continue. And it says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He watch over your life. God's going to protect us from all harms. All harms of the enemy. All the evils that wants to bring confusions. That wants to take you out of serving God, the one that's going to put doubt of you that, oh, am I wasting my time? Oh, is this a time I'm wasting? Oh, Lord, what is happening, God? How can I do this? But the Lord will give us the glory because he will protect us. He is will guide us. He will make sure that no harms, no harm, no harms, no harms will come towards us because he is there. He is there. His presence, his shadow is there no matter what. And he's going to protect your life. He's going to protect you. And I give glory to God because he has protected us from the womb of our mother. He has protected us. He has guided us. He has given us the blessing that we need. He has given us all the glory. And I give glory to God because he's the only one that will guide us and will protect us. I give glory to God. I give him glory. And the Lord will watch over us coming and going for now and forever. That's promise of God. He's there to protect you. He's there to protect you when you coming. Coming where? To his presence. Going where? To his presence. Now and forever. He don't say this just now and I leave you by. Ah, forget about the I see you. I'm out. Mm -mm. He's there. He's there with you. No matter what the enemy brings, he's there. He's there to protect you now and forever more. That's why we have to give glory to God. That's why if we look at that mountain that wants to try to bring us confusion in our journey, uh -uh, uh -uh, not in my watch, uh -uh, not in your watch, uh -uh, because what are you doing? You're serving a God, a living God. you serving God you humble, you are being obedient to him, you are giving it all. And like with that question, where is my where does my help come? Hey, from where else? From the Lord. There, there's nobody else that's gonna help you because maybe your friend might help you in a moment, maybe the family too. But when you come to realize. Mm -mm. the only one that gives you and will help you is the lord and we give honor and glory to him no matter what the mountain brings because remember i bought two definitions of the mountain the mountain could be a refuge protection but it could also bring a distraction or opposition and we have to know we have to know what mountain we're looking at i'm looking to the mountain of of refuge i'm looking at the mountain that i trust god i'm looking at the mountain where the presence of his lord is covering me i am looking at that mountain that's gonna guide me no matter what happens god you can I don't have to worry. I don't have to ask that question. 
I don't have to ask that question, where does my help comes? Because I know what God I trust. And I know that my help is coming from the Lord. So are you ready for that journey? Or you just, uh-uh. So now I'm thinking, could I climb that mountain? Yes, I can. I could climb that mountain. Why? Because I trust God. At the beginning, I said, mm-mm, it's hard. I ain't, uh -uh, that's not for me. I ain't going to happen. But now that I know that I got and my helper is the Lord, I don't got no doubt to climb that mountain. I don't got no doubt to trust in God. I don't got no doubt that if the enemy, like I always say, tries to bring whatever he wants to bring, let him bring everything or whatever. But we got, we trust our Lord. We trust him and we know what we're looking at. So today is a small message because, but the main thing here is, what are you looking at? Are you looking at that mountain of, of position, of problems, a situation? Or are we looking at the mountain where we're going to see his glory? Where we he's gonna see his presence, where we know that he's gonna be with us no matter what. I trust my God, my living God, the only one, the only one that no matter what, he's there. No matter what situation happens, he's there. No matter what, he never gives you back. No matter what. He holds you for you not to slip. No matter what, he is there. No matter what, we got the promise that we will have eternal life if we trust God. So let's go to this journey. Let's get together. Let's worship God. Let's praise him. Let's seek him. Let's get into the word. Let's go into the word and look what God got stored for us. Because I want more. I don't know. I hope nobody gets offended. But I'm kind of greedy in, in the God's word because I want more. I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to lack nothing. I want more. And I've been learning a lot of things that I'm going to, oh my God, what is this? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you. So I want more of his presence. And I know God got us in our journey, no matter what, God got us. In our journey, God holds us. In our journey, God loves us. In our journey, he holds us. In our journey, he's right beside us. And I give glory and honor to God. Thank you, Lord. I want to give glory to God for this message is kind of short. And forgive any attraction in the back, but I bring the word of God. I give glory and honor to God. Now I pass to, we could we stop the recording.